Hi Joop, uh, thanks for being with us. We are very proud to have you here in Private Kitchen and I, we want to talk a bit about your LA experience. Uh, so uh, you're one of the few people, the Dutch composers, who are active in LA and so I just wanted to know why you want to go there and how did you proceed? What, what kind of actions did you take to get there where you are right mm-hmm. now? Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about this? Sure. Um, the first time I came to LA I did not like it at all. I don't only did the tourist <laughs> stuff and I thought, ah, no, I could not live here. Although I really expected a city where I wanted to live because of all the film music and the film studios, etc. Um, and then after one or two years back in the Netherlands, I started doing uh, film music competitions for young composers. The first one was Transatlantic in uh, Poznan. Um, And I got selected in the last 10 and I went and I met a lot of great composers from all around the world. And um, I met a lot of uh, executives from ASCAP, BMI, uh, some agents, a lot of people from uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And then I also participated in the Young Talent Award at the Film Music Festival in Krakow, also Poland. And I eventually won the award. But... Even before I won the award, I went a couple of times to that festival and it was just a perfect network opportunity to make contacts with people from LA. And during this period, I started flying to LA to just for meetings because people invited me and I took them up on their word mm-hmm. and I just flew over there. And every time I came back with one job or maybe two jobs and I got to work more and more for, for the Los Angeles uh, uh, industry and eventually it was 70 80 percent of my work and my income came from america and that was really a moment for me um to decide to just try at least to to try to get a work visa because that's another story mm-hmm. um and if that would work out just try and live there for a couple of years and see how it will work out. And I was very lucky that my wife also was on board because she had a full-time job in uh, Maastricht in the Netherlands. And she gave up her job and she uh, joined me here on this adventure. And now we're here almost three years. And by now we've we got our green cards and we're both full-time working in Los Angeles. And it's getting better step by step, although... 2020 was pretty rough because all the studios mm. really stopped working. I, I got put on hold for a lot of a lot of work, but we managed through and we're busy now again. So very happy that this journey is still continuing. So the film music competitions were quite important for you from the point of networking. You had the possibility yes. to meet a lot of people. Apart from, of course, uh, winning at a certain moment the competition, but also showing your work, but also networking. Yeah. And you went over there to LA a couple of times. What, what kind of jobs did they give you uh, in the very beginning? What kind of stuff? Um, the the mo- most of the work I started out doing was library music. Okay. Uh, I've, ri- I've written a ton of library music for two, three labels here in Los Angeles. And through that... I got little successes, like I wrote a track for a library company and then I was watching the Oscar ceremony in 2017 and then all of a sudden I saw, I heard one minute of my music being used in one of the montages. (laughs) Financially, that wasn't interesting, I'm being very honest, but it really added to my resume. So like, you, I mean, you, you could show that your music was used in the Oscars and I had a couple of similar situations where... I found out that my music was used and putting that on your reel, contacting uh, other uh, clients and make a better impression and then you can really start making custom work. So I think that that was really the first jobs I got. And so it's also a library music, but what strikes me is that you have to go, still have to go over there to get these kind of assignments because you would assume that you get also get this kind of assignments, staying here in the Netherlands and just do it. Particularly for library music, uh, you don't have to go there and yeah. meet, talk to people. But it's, it's still important to go over there and meet the people. In I question. believe, I believe. I mean, there's a lot of levels in library music. Um, 
last 10 years it really improved mm-hmm. um, and I really think that if you I'm, I'm sure that if you meet people face to face that you get a you, you, you get more work than you would if you would just email them it's really great that if, only if they see you five to ten minutes they they put a name a face to the name and they uh, it, for me it always resulted in more work I tried to contact people a lot through email from the Netherlands Mm-hmm. And that uh, that wasn't a big success. It really started going better when I actually came here and showed my face. And also sometimes somebody from ASCAP I met sent an email to another composer that has a library. Uh, like I, I really recommend you uh, have him write two, one or two tracks, and that really also helped me in getting okay. those jobs. So it's really uh, it's really networking, I believe. Yeah, real life networking. Uh, yeah, I, I understand. So you, that's one of the su- suggestions you can make to to uh, upcoming composers who want to go to the Hollywood industry. Uh, go there yourself. And yeah, inv- definitely. Because it's it's also an investment. I assume. I, I assume they didn't pay your flight cost. You had no. to go. It is always an investment, but um, I mean. Ten years ago, I was bad at networking. When I mm. was uh, on a, in a, at a film music festival, I wasn't the guy that just introduced myself to somebody I ne- I've never known. But you, you, I, I grow into that. I grew into that, and uh, I really saw how fruitful it can be to have good connections and actually make friends in the industry and um, become a part of that. And then, of course, a, a ticket to Los Angeles is not cheap and staying here is not cheap and renting a car is not cheap but if you only get one job out of it it might pay for that that investment and if you get two jobs out of it you're actually earning some money yeah. and it's always i mean it's always a dive in the deep also especially some advice if you ever want to uh, move to los angeles i would not have been able to come here without having work already because it's so expensive to live here so it's Unless you do like an internship with another composer, um, it's it's really important that you have something going on, that you have some form of income or a big savings account that you are willing to spend on the first couple of years because it's it's really a big investment. Yeah, I understand. And uh, did you already go there during your studies? Did you already have it as an intern or not? I tried to go, but eventually I did not go. I okay. did. Uh, I interned for Project Sam. Ah, I see, that's all the company. That's uh, the company yeah. you used to work in the past. That's, yes, that's right. so, yes, yeah. yeah. Actually, this is also deliver context because I can imagine working at Project Sam, you also got in touch with American film composers using the libraries of Project Sam. I definitely got in touch with a lot of composers through Project Sam, but no, I never used it for my own work. Right. That's right. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, but it really helped me be getting more confident in communicating. And... Uh, about the networking, because you said you weren't used to do this. How, how do you do? It? Did you simply working uh, walking around on a party? You go to people and you, and you introduce yourself. How do you do this? Can you say something about it? <laughs> <laughs> are you are you uh, are you nowadays easy with that? Did I'm much learn? more easier with it for sure, because. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you in the beginning you find yourself standing in, in, in an impressive crowd with all. You look around your old film composers you 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 admire are around you, and then you're standing there alone, and it's not really an option to just stand there alone with your with your beer and don't do anything. Uh, so I had some awkward moments in the beginning, I'm sure, but uh, you just you just try to connect and introduce yourself. And um, by now, I I know enough people that I'm never alone anymore on, in a network event. But in the beginning, it's just. You just gotta take that step and introduce yourself and and, and start chatting. It's really that, that's that's the the most tricky step for me. It's just going there and introducing yourself, and after that you just you're fine. And and not not only talk about film music. I mean, it's just on a social level connect. Okay, it's very uh, insightful to have this, all heard uh, all this stuff uh, from you. So many thanks for this. <laughs> and from our audience, uh, if you want to know more about Hugh Spork and have a other look at uh, some other interviews, have a look at privatekitchen.nl. Many thanks. Mm-hmm.